By now, you've surely heard how much of a nightmare holiday travel was this year. In fact, many of you are probably watching this on your phones at the airport, still waiting for your Southwest flight. That's because Southwest cancelled more than 15,000 flights in total during the busiest travel week of the year. That includes nearly 3,000 flights the Monday after Christmas alone. That was 70% of its flight schedule for the day often one of the busiest of the year. Things didn't improve the next day with another 2,600 cancelled Southwest flights, about 65% of its normal schedule. And it snowballed from there with even more delays and cancellations through the end of last week, leaving hundreds of thousands of passengers stranded, sometimes for days as they tried to get home. The airline has since apologised and is trying to make good with frequent flyer points and refunds for customers caught in the chaos. There was blame put on winter weather, but no other airline came close to the same number of cancellations as Southwest. On the Tuesday after Christmas, for example, Southwest accounted for 54% of the 4,700 flights cancelled across all airlines. And now Southwest's pilot and flight attendant unions are saying the company failed to heed calls to upgrade computer systems while increasing their CEO's total compensation to a whopping $9 million. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is promising to investigate the Southwest meltdown and make sure that customers get compensation for missed flights. We are going to be putting Southwest Airlines under a microscope in terms of their delivering these kinds of reimbursements and refunds to passengers. The airline said to me that they were going to go above and beyond what's required of them. Uh, I'm looking to make sure they actually do that. And if they don't, uh, we are in a position to levy tens of thousands of dollars per violation per passenger in fines. That's great. I'm glad Secretary Buttigieg is going to investigate. But wouldn't it have been better to act earlier to prevent this meltdown from happening in the first place? The cancellations are clearly Southwest's fault at the end of the day. But the question I want to ask today, and it's an important one, is this. Is it possible that Pete Buttigieg could have done more to keep this situation from going totally south, west? The folks over at Fox certainly think so. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg was warned a meltdown like this was bound to happen. I know Pete Buttigieg was busy on vacation for a while himself and said he guaranteed everything would be great by Christmas. The truth is Pete Buttigieg doesn't want this job. He thinks he's better than this job. The fact that you think that, 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 that Pete Buttigieg is going to do an investigation into Southwest Airlines and that's going to do anything for Southwest Airlines and travel, Southwest will fix this. Um, Pete Buttigieg never will. Now, anyone who watches this show knows I am no fan of Fox. But just because Fox is attacking Secretary Buttigieg and doing so in typical bad faith fashion, that doesn't mean we all have to therefore blindly defend Buttigieg's performance on this issue. It doesn't mean the Transportation Secretary should just be given a pass, given all the chaos. On the contrary, he has a fair few questions to answer here. The chief one being, was he asleep at the wheel? And you don't just have to take my word for it. All the way back in June of last year, Senator Bernie Sanders wrote to Buttigieg, urging him to take immediate action to substantially reduce the number of airline cancellations and delays. Now, you might say, well, that's just Bernie being Bernie. Yet just a month later, in July, Democratic Senators Elizabeth Warren and Alex Padilla sent Buttigieg another letter, asking the Department of Transportation to fully utilize its authority to protect consumers amid skyrocketing prices and increased delays and, yes, cancellations. In response to the senators, the Department of Transportation said it would continue to pressure airlines over consumer protections and hold them accountable. But the letters kept coming. In early August, New York AG, New York Attorney General Letitia James, shared her concern over an escalating pattern of airlines delaying and cancelling flights, particularly over holiday weekends. And it didn't stop there. James and 37 more state attorneys general, many of them remember Democrats, wrote to Congress later that same month complaining that the Transportation Department under Secretary Buttigieg had failed to respond to consumer complaints against airlines. But despite all these warnings, Buttigieg kept on the rose-colored glasses, confidently telling Late Late Show host James Corden the situation would be improved by Christmas. This past summer, I'm sure people here in the audience experience this. A lot of disruption, thousands of flights cancelled, uh, even more delayed. It was kind of a brutal summer for travel. What can be done about this? Do you think 
this issue will be sorted in time for the holidays. I think it's going to get better by the holidays. We're really pressing the airlines to deliver better service. I think we all know how well that clip has aged. In the Department of Transportation's defense, they did eventually issue some major fines late last year, late last year, in November, and got six airlines to refund more than $600 million to travelers ahead of the 2022 holiday season. However, however, only one of those airlines was an American airline. The rest were foreign, easy targets. That meant no fines for airlines like United, Delta or American, who consumer analysts say have thousands of complaints against them. And of course, no fines for Southwest. Again, to be clear, even accounting for weather, the sheer extent of this holiday travel disaster falls mostly at the feet of Southwest. The Department of Transportation did not cause the cancellations or flight delays. That being said, they were warned that chaos was coming, and the action they took was too little, too late. Remember, Secretary Pete Buttigieg is supposed to be a champion of the consumer and a regulator of the airline industry. Hopefully, he will fully step into those shoes before the rest of us have to fly to see family next Christmas. Joining me now, Bill McGee. He's a senior fellow at the American Economic Liberties Project. Back in 2010, Obama Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood chose him as the lone consumer advocate on the future of Aviation Advisory Committee. Bill, thanks for coming on the show. In an op-ed you wrote for NBCNews.com, you blame the holiday travel debacle on, quote, lax oversight by the Transportation Department, as well as the airlines prioritizing stock dividends and executive compensation over necessary investments. Can you tell us in more detail exactly what went wrong over these holidays? Certainly. And thanks very much for having me on. Uh, the fact is, this is a broken airline industry, and it has been for some time. But it's also important to note that the DOT that you've been speaking about, the U.S. Department of Transportation, that is a broken regulatory model. In fact, it's the, the prototypical captured agency that seems much more concerned with the corporations that they're supposed to be regulating than with the American taxpayers. So with this Southwest debacle, I think those of us that have sort of been in the trenches for many years, and, and I've been around the airline industry since 1985, uh, we were not overly surprised. I think everyone was surprised by the size and scope of this meltdown. We've never had one of this, of this magnitude. Um, we've seen things like this before. But if the math is done, even in a very conservative way, the number of cancellations that you're talking about affected more than a million passengers in the, in the course of a week. So that's unprecedented. But again, I can't say that I'm surprised. The U.S. Department of Transportation, across not years, but decades, multiple administrations, both Democratic and Republican, has been a yeah. very weak regulator. And with so Secretary Buttigieg, when he took office, um, I met with him, as did other con uh, consumer advocates, and quite frankly, we had very high hopes. And when we talked to him, he seemed engaged, and he seemed like he was going to get something done, unlike his predecessor. And unfortunately, um, he's been a very, a very big disappointment. Um, he has not gotten tough with the worst offenders, whether it's fining them, whether it's, it's it, basically Why? his approach has been. Why, Bill? Well, Why do you think he's not got tough on the worst offenders? I think it's all it's all right there in what you just cited. Those those fines that you talked about, the six fines in November, five foreign airlines and one small airline, all guilty by the way, all deserving of fines. But Frontier carries about two percent of the market share in this country. Um, for whatever reason, he has been reluctant to go after the worst offenders. United, American, Delta, Southwest. We have more concentration in this industry than we've ever had in history. Four carriers control about eighty five percent of the market. And he has not fined any of them so much as one dollar for these massive cancellations, for not paying refunds, which is what those uh, fines in November are about. And he has allowed them to just do the same thing over and over again. It's really, it's really textbook insanity. He has, he has urged them. He has pleaded with them. He has asked them. That doesn't work. I can assure you, I've been knocking heads with airlines for decades now yes. on behalf of consumers. And it doesn't work to ask them nicely. You, you mentioned the airlines. You look at someone, you look at an airline like Southwest, $9 million compensation package for the CEO, uh, plenty of stock buybacks, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, can you chalk down the Southwest travel chaos, not to weather, not to broken computer systems, but to greed, corporate greed? 
Well, there's no question. Um, I, I speak about this from, I think, a, a particular level of expertise because I spent seven years in airline flight operations management. I'm licensed by the FAA as an aircraft dispatcher. So I was in the belly of the beast for seven years. I, I, I canceled flights myself. I rescheduled them. I dealt with snowstorms, hurricanes, you name it. The bottom line is it's not about the outside factor. It's about how the airline responds to it. As you correctly yes. noted, Every other airline in the country was back on its feet within 24 to 48 hours. Southwest, a week later, was still stranding passengers. Southwest made deliberate decisions not to invest in its, uh, in its IT, in its technology. It has crew scheduling systems that would have been outdated 30 years ago. Pilots and flight attendants had to get on the phone in 2022 to say that they were available for work. Uh, Southwest instead chose, as, as all the U.S. airlines have been doing, um, you know, stock buybacks, uh, executive compensation, dividends. This is an industry that when there's a problem, like with COVID, then the losses get socialized and we, the taxpayers, yes. pay for it. In that case, $54 billion in a bailout. But when times are better and they're making money, then that's privatized. It's, it's a formula that just does not work. And it's a formula that, as you say, uh, administrations of both party have been okay with. Let's just talk about the current Department of Transportation before we finish. You could call it broken. If you were Pete Buttigieg, what would you do to fix the Department of Transportation, briefly? What I would have done was, months ago, I would have had all of the airline CEOs in, and I would have said, these cancellations are unacceptable. You are clearly scheduling flights and accepting money for flights with the knowledge that you are probably not going to have the ability to operate them. You don't have enough crew. And so I would have tried to head off this entire holiday debacle months and months ago, if not a year ago, and, and say there will be real penalties. And by the way, some of these penalties, first of all, they always get knocked down to about a tenth of, of what you're, is announced in the press release. But for the airlines, this is, this is just change. They need real penalties. Let's see what happens with Southwest. They now have to make do and take care of an awful lot of passengers and all those expenses they have. But the focus also is going to be on Pete Buttigieg in the next couple of weeks because he has to make sure that Southwest does that.